Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the January 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level exam. This question here is about, I guess, indices, okay, exponential equations. And it says by substituting P equals 2 to the power of X, show that the equation 2 times 4 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x plus 3 equals 17 times 2 to the power of x minus 1 minus 4 can be written in this form 4p squared minus 33p plus 8 equals 0. So here they have kindly told us what to do. They've told us what substitution to make. So anywhere we see 2 to the power of x we must replace it with p. Now the problem is we don't see 2 to the power of x um, on its own in any place. We see 4 to the power of x, we see 2 to the power of x plus 3, okay, which is not quite 2 to the power of x. We see 2 to the power of x plus 3, and we also see 2 to the power of x minus 1. So we can rewrite these using the laws of indices such that you can write them in terms of 2 to the power of x, and that's our objective here. So I know that 4 to the power of x is the same as saying 2 squared to the power of x because 4 can be written as 2 squared. And I know also that 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x can be written as 2 to the power of x squared. These are the same because I know that a to the power of m, if I raise it to the power of n, is the same as a to the power of m times n which means it's the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. You can swap those powers around and it'll, be, it'll give you the same thing because n times n and m times n are the same. So 2 times x and x times 2 are the same. Okay, this is x times 2, 2 times x. You multiply the powers. So this can then be, then be written as p squared. So 4 to the power of x, we can replace this with p squared according to this substitution here. And 2 to the power of x plus 3, we can also use the laws of indices that when you have two numbers in index form and you multiply them together, you add the powers. So if we work backwards from that, this can be written as 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 3. Because you add the powers and it will give you this, which is the same as 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So you have 2 to the power of x times 8. So this is like 8 times p, okay? because 2 to the power of x is p. So it's, it's p times a, which is 8p. So therefore, we can say 2 to the power of x plus 3 is equal to 8p. Okay, and then 2 to the power of x minus 1, we can also think of that as 2 to the power of x divided by 2 to the power of 1. If you remember from, again, if you have the law of indices, a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. So this subtraction law here we can use backwards in reverse to split this up into two parts. So this is going to be like 2 to the power of x divided by 2. So it's like 2 to the power of x times a half. Okay, so you can say it's a half of p. So this can be written as a half p. So we can say that 2 to the power of x minus 1, 2 to the power of x minus 1 is the same as a half of p. And then we can put them into the equation. So we're left with 2 times 4 to the power of x, so 2 times p squared minus 2 to the power of x minus 3, which is 8p, is equal to 17 times, and you have 2 to the power of x minus 1, which is a half p, and minus 4. So we're just replacing, okay, this with that, and this with that, and this with that, okay? And now we've got everything in terms of p, and we have to show that this simplifies to this, so um, what we can do here, I guess, is we can multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fractions. So we have 4p squared, which looks good so far, minus 16p equals 17p, and that's going to be minus 8. Okay, so now we have 4p squared minus 16p minus 17p plus 8 equals 0. So we're almost there. Minus 16p minus 17p is minus 33p, so we know we are on the right track. So we have we end up with 4p squared minus 33p plus 8 equals 0. So we have completed that part A. Pretty simple there. 
So this is just using the laws of indices to rewrite this in this form. Now, they didn't have to tell us, um, well, I guess they did in a way, but you know, they could have just said solve this equation. Solve this equation. And you would have to think of how to do something like this yourself. But they've given us how to write it in this form, and then they've told us to solve the equation. So for part B, which is where they tell us to solve the equation, hence using what we just found solve this equation and remember we were supposed to use the substitution p equals 2 to the power of x that's important as well for us to remember so in the end we got to have the answers in terms of x but we're going to use this in order to help us solve the equation okay because um when we factor we know that this equation led to this equation with the substitution and that's what we were asked to do and we're going to now ask to use this to solve the equation okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to first solve for p so here we have a quadratic it's a type of quadratic where we have to split the middle term now in p1 you have to show some steps you can't just put this in your calculator and you know use the answer use the uh, equation um, function to solve this you have to solve this by um, factorizing or completing the square or using the quadratic formula okay any of those three methods you must show your steps for those methods. Very, very important. Now, I'm going to do this by factorizing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will factorize because we are dealing with exponential functions and we don't have logarithms in P1. So it's pop most probably going to factorize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the middle term in factorizing, but I'm going to do it in my own little way using this kind of window method that I use, which some of you might not have heard of before or seen, but it's the same thing as splitting the middle term. Basically, you go back in the same way. You multiply these two terms together. Um, so you first write them in these two, co this, this top corner and this bottom corner here. 4p squared and 8 written in these two parts with the right signs. Then I multiply them together. That gives me 32p squared. Then I find two numbers whose sum is negative 33p. The sum is the same as this. So that's the product. These two multiplied and that's the sum. Now, I know that the product is positive and the sum is negative. They're both negative numbers. And 32 and um, we want to end up with 33. We can think of the numbers that will multiply to give us 32 uh, and add to give us uh, 33. Okay. Well, you can think of as, let's say, 32 times 1. Yes they will multiply if they're both negative you get negative 33 when you multiply them and when you add them you get negative 33 so let's say that's negative 32 P and minus 1 P now we can take out the common factor from these two terms that's going to be 4 P 4 P times P is 4 P squared 4 P times minus 8 is 30 negative 32 P and P times minus 1 is going to be um, minus P so we end up with this becoming p minus 8 times 4p minus 1 equals 0. So we let, we're left with p either p minus 8 is 0 or 4p minus 1 is 0. So p is equal to 8 or p is equal to a quarter. So now we have to actually don't stop there. Some people will stop here and they think they're finished. No, we have to find x. Solving this equation means find the value of x. So we know that we use the substitution p equals 2 to the power of x, like we were told. So now we can replace the p with 2 to the power of x. So we have 2 to the power of x equals 8, and 2 to the power of x equals a quarter. So now we have these exponential equations, and in, in, P, in P1 we can always, always rewrite them with the same base. So we know that 8, we should know that 8 is 2 to the power of 3. This gives us 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 3. And here we can say 2 to the power of x is equal to now a quarter, can be written as 1 over 2 squared which is 2 to the power of negative 2 so you can write this as 2 to the power of negative 2 and now we can say if these are the same the x's must be the same as well because the bases are the same the powers must be the same here 2 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of minus 2 in this case x must be equal to negative 2 now were there any conditions on our question in the beginning nope they didn't tell us x has to be a certain value okay um okay that's fine so these therefore are our two answers x equals three and x equals negative two okay so there we have the answer to this question now um 
other questions from this particular um, paper can be found in the playlist which will be appearing in the top right of this screen at the end of the video the link for the topic of I guess this will be under indices and exponential equations you can find that in the playlist at the bottom right here and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and here you can find a video which is linked which shows you how to use my channel thank you for watching and see you soon